In my last video, I quickly covered the Plateau tool. Many said they did not quite get it, so here's a dedicated tutorial on that tool. I'll cover four issues that this tool solves. One, adding a board with a different height setting. Two, river banks. Three, a track cutting into the side of a mountain. And lastly, track embankments. So let's get into it. Here, we're looking at a situation showing what happens when you add a board that's a different height and how best to merge it into the root. There is often more than one way to solve a problem. Before I get into how to use the Plateau tool to fix this, let's explore other ways first. I could use the Height Up tool. Let's try. I am using about three quarters of the maximum radius and just about 3% sensitivity. You can see there is a ridge which retains the original shape, not so good. I could try the Adjust Height tool, that's even less successful though. So let's reset this with the Undo option and try the Plateau tool. You will note the Plateau tool also has a radius and sensitivity setting. It is essentially fixed. I set the sensitivity at about one stop. The radius is not so critical, but I use about 50% of full size. OK, I'll try it. To start, I position the cursor on the target height I want to work with. In this case, the highest point. As you can see, the result is reasonably realistic. I could also set the height at the lower board level. Let's see what is different. In this situation, I don't think it's quite as successful or realistic. However, if I then go back to using the higher setting, or a number of settings in between highest and lowest, you can see by using a little finesse, you can get a more gradual and smoother slope. I think on the board mismatch problem, the Plateau tool is the best tool. So let's move on to problem two, riverbanks. Now let's have a look at the riverbanks. Banks are rarely symmetrical, in other words, they're not the same all along the bank. On sharp curves, the river may even get wider due to the force of erosion with fast running currents. So let's see what the Plateau tool can do to help make it more realistic. Now, before I start, I have made this riverbank textured to make subtle changes more viewable. And I have also made the land behind the banks different elevations. The banks still have too much sameness, with little change in slope, no erosion, they're bland and featureless. Yeah, I think featureless, that's the word. Let's start on the bank side with no shadows. I will start with a low sensitivity setting. Now I'll increase the sensitivity to one notch. Note, I had the foresight to lay the water well beyond the river boundary. So if I made the river bank wider, as I just did, there would still be water there. If you look along that bank, I think it has much more character now. One important note for developers, as the river gets further away from local points of view, usually meaning a track, investing in this level of detail is just not necessary, not at all. Here is a final view of the small inlet I made. Imagine some willow trees, grasses and broken branch or two, as well as some well-placed rocks. Ah, oh, there it is. But I forgot the willow tree, let's add that too. Moving on to problem three, here I have a track running along a mountainside. But as it would have been man-made, it does not look quite right to me. Too many jagged edges and the slope is too erratic and uneven. So can the plateau tool help fix this? I'll start with a radius of 30%. 
and a sensitivity of one notch. It is unusual to use a lot of sensitivity with this tool. It requires some caution when using too, and never forget you can undo it if it does go wrong. So here goes. Hmm, I find I could still have the slope more consistent and just starting at the edge of the ballast. So then I'll use the smooth spline tool to finish it. My final challenge needs more than just the plateau tool in most cases, but let's check it out. Yes, it does look quite artificial, and even if I used the plateau tool to change the slope, it would still look artificial. So, I actually need to change the elevation along the truck somewhat first. And for that I'll use the height tool, with different sensitivity at selected points of the right of way, to have the track running over a slight valley. Now I know this track has an elevation of 25 metres above the floor, so I will set it to that, and set to a large radius, with little sensitivity initially just to test the setting. Then I can increase the sensitivity to about 30%. Then I'll create steps of lower elevation across the track by changing the radius to about half and lowering the specified height and do this several times over the length. Now comes the plateau tool, leaving the radius the same and the sensitivity under three stops. Now I'll apply the smooth spline tool and then a small hill along the line and off camera to check out its reality factor. That looks reasonable. I'd probably take some time to fine tune it before detailing, but it's okay. If you've reached this point and have enjoyed the video, or even better have learned something, congratulations. I'd like to encourage you to hit that subscribe button below the video and also don't forget to gong the bell next to the subscribe button because that ensures you'll get notified when new tutorials are uploaded to my YouTube channel. So, back to the video. I hope this helps you understand the Plato tool and become a little bit more creative with your next route's landscape development. I hope you found this tutorial enjoyable and of benefit. If you have any thoughts to share, please add a comment below the video. I always check the comments and appreciate every one of them. But now, that's it from me. Hooroo!